Hi, welcome back to Hard Knocks Games and Hobbies. Today we're going to be talking about modular tabletop terrain for war games and Dungeons and Dragons or Frostgrave or whatever you might want to use it for. Talking about modularity, that brings to our first topic, which is static boards versus modular boards. As a shop, we much prefer modular boards, which is typically a flat board with walls or buildings or trees or whatever that are able to just be placed and moved. And that way, every time you play, your board setup is different. We typically use modular terrain for wargaming purposes just because it's much easier, it's more economical for us, and it prevents the board from becoming boring or a set piece that everyone knows the scenario and the best deployment zones. We do have a beautiful static board in the back that uh, some friends of mine built. They gifted me this board uh, a while back, and it, it looks beautiful. Um, it's made from a bunch of Zeterdees terrain. After about your third game on this same board, it becomes not as much fun to play on the same static terrain all the time. So that brings us to like, well, how do we make terrain? What do we do? Uh, what is the most effective way of banging out a board worth of terrain? And that's going to really depend on what kind of game you're playing. If you're playing Frostgrave, like we've been playing a lot of uh, recently, and Frostgrave boards require a lot of terrain. Like it is thick with like four C's. Like it is some thick terrain. That's a thick <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, as opposed to playing a game of, say, Kings of War, where you're not going to want as much obstruction on the table because you're pushing around large regiments of troops. So really, your mileage is going to vary on this depending on the application you're building for. Obviously, if you're building for Dungeons and Dragons, you're going to want some definite like small piece modularity to be able to construct whatever you need out of that. We have found... 3D printing is your friend. Prior to the proliferation of 3D printing, uh, we obviously scratch built a ton of terrain, a foam board, uh, insulation foam, plaster. Uh, we used a lot of hydrocal molds, a lot of Hearst Arts molds. We have built and run the gamut of terrain. And in the last probably two and a half, three years, we've invested in three different 3D printers for the shop, plus a resin printer. So we've got four 3D printers total now. And it has allowed us to kick out several amazing terrain boards purchased several uh, the Star Wars-esque. They're not Star Wars. It's space terrain for copyright purposes, but it's very obviously Star Wars terrain. Scratch built is cheaper, cheaper investment wise. Scratch built is more, I guess you might say creative. If you like want to create and you've got that, I'm making a piece of art here and I'm going to use this like spool and 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 i'm going to use this this foam board and i'm going to turn it into um the most amazing thing you've ever seen we used to have to do that but now that we're old and lazy um we don't scratch build much anymore around here a third option for terrain uh is laser cut that has become very common now we've got some foreground miniatures laser cut terrain that we love here it is very expensive it is probably for the money, for the dollar, it is the most expensive terrain you can possibly buy. But it's pre-painted and it's stunning when it's put together. It's also a little fragile. We don't let like the general public use the foreground miniatures terrain that I have purchased myself because the terrain takes a beating at this shop. It gets stuff dropped on it, it gets tossed on the shelf. That's why the 3D printed stuff has been nice because it it wears a little bit better than the scratch built or the laser cut terrain because it's it's made out of pla and it's got a little bounce to it and a little give and like it doesn't break down like our other terrain has but laser cut is beautiful now you can go to the lower end of the laser cut stuff that's unpainted equally as beautiful but you're gonna spend a lot of time painting it and painting it can be a little bit tricky, which we're going to talk about paint selection for painting terrain um, now. I'm going to go ahead and say you don't want to use your expensive paints when you're painting buildings um, or hills or trees or anything like that. You can if you want to, but your wallet will thank you if you don't use the expensive stuff. Um just because you're gonna go through a lot of it, especially if you're painting foam, like if you're scratch building, uh, the foam soaks up paint. And same thing with laser cut terrain. If you don't have the nice foreground pre-painted terrain when you laser cut, you're really gonna have to use enamel paint 
to start with, uh, which takes forever to dry. Otherwise, the MDF laser cut terrain absorbs so much paint. Um, you'll go through one of those 10 milliliter jars of GW paint and not even have like a wall section done. It can be incredibly frustrating for people whose first time painting terrain. You're like, I just used this $4.50 bottle of paint and it got me a less than a six inch section done. Don't use expensive paints um when you're painting your terrain even even the 3d printed stuff um because of like the way the the fdm printers layer then you get the ridge lines and stuff you're it's going to soak some paint it's good you're going to have a lot of um you're going to use a lot so i don't recommend plaid paints or any of that stuff for any kind of miniatures or model painting but you can use that cheap bull on terrain all day and it's your friend it is the best value for money for painting terrain and uh, uh that, that that burns a little to say that but it, it's it's true use it on base coats get your main colors now if you want to make your terrain look really good once you get those base coats of things done then you go back with your nice paints and you highlight you do your highlights or you pick out a few details with your nice paints whereas with our 3d printed like uh the frost grave board that we just did for the shop there's a lot of plaid paint gray on those uh we primered it with army painter spray primer which is on the cheaper side of primers we dry brushed it with this with the gray but the roof lines we wanted a kind of a unique color because we we're like it's a frozen city let's do blue roofs so we used one of the uh army painter i think it was a, like their viking blue or something for the roofs and then we highlighted that with another color and then we threw a wash on on all of it uh washes are your friends uh all the time but when it comes to painting terrain especially painting terrain because a good wash can make kind of not so great paint um look okay and it'll it just gives it the depth we use the uh big 200 milliliter jars of uh, vallejo a black wash or the vallejo sepia wash depending on the application that's our workhorses when it comes to painting terrain uh, obviously any wash or tone will do but you're going to go through a lot of it so uh, make sure that you don't go broke don't use the null oil on the uh on the on the terrain it's too expensive to waste so you can make your own washes but the vallejo makes those really nice convenient 200 milliliter jars and you can just you can just wash all day with them uh, that brings us to the next part is uh flocking your terrain flocking is like the static grass the the tufts that it looks like you know grass and flowers and weeds and stuff on your board for us for most of our boards we use a rollout uh, neoprene uh, play mats for the basing and that's mainly because our stuff gets played on so much We've tried like making like base flocked boards in the past and after a few months, the flock just gets scraped off, knocked off and it starts to look like real shit after a while. So flocking is going to be a personal choice if you want to mess with it. On our terrain pieces, because it's modular, we typically use it as accent. Like we'll do like a, a line of moss going up a wall with some flock and some glue. We use a few tufts to add a, a couple of pieces, but for the most part, we don't flock in mass a board anymore. For building a playable board surface, I personally don't recommend it. Use a play mat. Um, if you can't afford a neoprene play mat, use a tan blanket or something like anything that you're going to move figures around on constantly is going to wear. Anyway, enough flocking, talking about flocking. So in my experience, long story short, 3D printed terrain on a neoprene play mat is going to serve the best. It's going to hold up the best. It's going to be the easiest to deploy. It's going to be the most durable and the most versatile terrain you can have. Hey, it's me, Allison, your friendly neighborhood editor. Wayne didn't record an outro, so I'm here to let you know that we appreciate you for watching. Thanks again for hanging with us, and we'll see you next time.